We can represent a dynamic system whose input is U and output is Y using the state space form shown here. This could also be written as an nth order differential equation. In the form here, it's a set of coupled first order differential equations. In state space form, the states are not unique for a given system. That means that the input-output relationship U to Y is the same, but how we model the internal parts can be different. This could be like looking at an engine where you're interested in the input-output power. You could model the system mechanically and look at the pistons and the valves and the flywheel and come up with an input-output relationship that way. Or you could look at it simply as a thermodynamic energy-input-energy-output balance and come up with a relationship that way. The input-output relationship in the end will give you the same result, but how you look at the system internally can be different. And state space models let you look at the internals of the system differently. The way to move from one internal representation to another is called a similarity transformation. Here's the math behind it. I'm going to define my new state z with the relationship like this. x, the old state, is equal to t times z. In order for this math to work out, t will need to be n by n, where n is the number of states, and t will see needs to be invertible. The inverse needs to exist. Substituting tz for x, taking the derivatives, since t is a constant, the derivative is tz. a tz, again substituting tz for x plus bu, and y is equal to c tz plus du. Now solve for z dot, and we're left the equation here. z dot equals t inverse at times z plus t inverse b times u, y is equal to ct plus du. This is a new state equation. You can see this is our new a matrix here. This is our new b matrix. Our new c matrix and the d matrix remains the same. And again, we have the state relationship z dot equals az plus bu, y is equal to cz plus du. Same form as we had before, but now the state z is different. z gives us a different internal interpretation of the original differential equation. Let's look at an example problem. Here's a state equation. The input is u, the output is y. This is a single input, single output system. It's second order, and in the state form, we're representing it with two coupled first order differential equations. I want to transform the state, but still leave the input output relationship the same. And in this example, I'm just going to pick an example that gives me an answer that I'm interested in, but you could actually pick any T matrix that you wanted as long as T was invertible. The transformation I'm going to pick is shown here. So if I follow through with the state transformation where this is the T matrix here, and I would need to calculate the inverse of T and then do all this matrix multiplication, I'm not going to show you the examples here. You should go to MATLAB and do this one just to verify the results. You're doing the multiplication, you find the results are here. Now this has an interesting form. Notice in this form that we still have two states, input u, output y, but the states are no longer coupled. I've written down the actual states here, the z0, z1 dot, and z0, z1 that corresponds to the z and the z dot values. z0 dot is equal to minus 1 z0 plus 1.41u. It's a single equation right here. It's not coupled. And on the bottom half, we have another single e equation. So I have another representation for the system from input u to output y. But in this case, it's represented by two differential equations, which are not coupled. And then the solution, the output y, is just the sum of the responses of those two equations. This turns out to be a nice form because we can see the poles of the system right here. We can calculate the eigenvalues or the poles of the system by solving this equation here. So first I'm going to fill in the values. Here's S times the identity matrix minus A. Here's my A matrix right there. Take the determinant of that. So I do the algebra here, and now I need to take the determinant of this. And we're left with this equation. S plus 1 times S plus 2 is equal to 0, which means that the roots are S is equal to minus 1, S is equal to minus 2. That's the poles of the system. It's the eigenvalues of the A matrix. And if we scroll up here, you can see that in this particular form, the eigenvalues are right on the diagonal. And we will do this in a future video. We'll show that if you diagonalize a system, 
That is, you do a state transformation so that you retain the same input U to output Y, but change the internal states of the system and pick a transformation so that you have a diagonalized matrix, then the eigenvalues show up right on the diagonal. It's very useful because you can see things about the response of the system right from that form.